Welcome to the Digital Growth Hack Club, where we help you elevate your business and your bottom line. Here is your host, Jenny Jones. Hey, this is Jenny Jones, Digital Growth Hacks Club. I am super excited. We've got David here from Invo. Listen, everybody's been asking about this tool. It's been all the buzz. I'm just so excited. He found time in his busy schedule to come on the show and kind of just talk about the tool, kind of give us some insights, maybe some secrets, maybe some behind the scenes stuff, maybe what's coming up. But uh, I just want to welcome to the show, David, welcome to the Digital Growth Hacks Club. My subscribers, they're going to love this tool. I've been telling them. Tell us what's going on. How you doing today? That's good, man. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, no, it's 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 great. So kind of give us maybe an elevator pitch, right? Of what is Minvo? What is this this tool everybody keeps talking about? Yeah. I mean, if you're watching this in 2024, you know that short, short form video is the fastest growing and the easiest way to reach people. And it's short form video is crazy because it's the first platform where the content gets recommended to people and people don't need to find you. Right. And it's an amazing platform. Um, Minvo exists to help anyone creating content, whether you're a business or an influencer or other, uh, help you create that short form content really quickly, bring all the tips and tricks that the best editors know into an AI powered tool that will find pieces of your content, turn it into short form, and then streamline all the social media. I think what's been, uh, you know, we did our app Somo deal just last week, and it's going on for the next few weeks. I think what's been going great, people have been going crazy for is the fact that it's in one to one stop shop for cutting video, using AI to identify key parts, editing video, and streamlining all the social media scheduling. Um, bringing that into one all in one box is what gives businesses and creators the time savings as well as the effectiveness. And we've just seen so many stories of people who use the tool and go from having 100 views to 1,000 views. And it's really a testament to the fact that they have great content. They just uh, needed a way to repackage it, distribute it, and do that more consistently. Wow. So that, I mean, to me, when, when I started telling people, I, I stumbled upon, I was like, wait, well, so wait, wait, this is different. And I was telling people, they're like, oh, it's just another AI. I was like, no, no, this one's different. They got a full-blown editor in there. Well, it's probably not full-blown, but it's it's it is an editor there's most tools that don't even have an editor in there and i think i think even you guys are even going to do some things even you're going to even add some more to the editor so tell us about that tell us about the whole thing even bringing say hey let's throw, throw an editor in there as well what, what was the thoughts behind that yeah you know uh, minvos was actually pretty early to the game uh, one of the earliest short form video editors but what we realized is as people started using the tool um, the biggest thing that was missing for anyone trying to create seriously engaging video was a precise timeline based editor. And, you know, even Descript, most of you are probably familiar with Descript, the video editor, they started the whole transcript editing thing. Adobe's piled on to that. Um, right. and I think transcript based editing has so much potential and it is super useful for cutting and, um, you know, adding, editing in emojis, for example, uh, right. or editing in B-roll. It's super useful for those things, but it's not that great for precise editing of camera frames, um, you know, working with the audio wave and all that stuff. So that is something that I don't think anyone in the market has right now, unless you're using CapCut or a full on video editor, but that is what makes Minvo so different. It is not just all the sweet bells and whistles of those tools that use AI to identify key parts and try to create fun edits for you. But it also is all the things that you'd expect from a full on video editor, you know, as we're building up to all the features that Adobe's been building for 30 years, but you know, right. a full video editor and everything you'd expect from something like Hootsuite or a buffer for your social media management. So um, having all that come together and streamlining it, uh, that is, I think, where people really see that there's no comparison between what Minvo is doing right now and anything else in the market. Wow. So, I mean, it is exciting. So what do you say about those people, right? I was reading some of the comments like, what are you talking about? These guys are, oh, it, it, um, it doesn't do good um, output, right? They're like, oh, the output's off. And what, what I mean, uh, we're not going to address the super haters, but what do you, what do you guys do about that to try to make sure that the output is is accurate as possible when it comes to the captions and stuff. What do you say? What do you do about? It? What are you guys doing about that? Yeah, I mean, I think we all have to admit that generating a video is an incredibly creative process and one that sure. has a lot of variability. So, uh, over oh, since we started the company, the number one thing we've been focused on is how do you create a great final product? 
And I think that's how you judge these these softwares is what creates the best final product. So the the process of creating a great final product starts all the way from what parts of the content are selected, then what kind of edits are applied, um, and then all the things in between uh, in that process. So I think the number one complaints we've seen are either the mo the moments that the AI selected sometimes are not what they expect what the user expected, which is right. kind of understandable given everyone has different and expectations. <laughs> and it's AI, so right. And it's AI, right? It's AI for uh, some reason still thinks I'm a female, so because <laughs> my name is Jenny Jones, they're like. Well, she does this, she does that. I'm like, wait, what? So I'm being <laughs> funny, but that is how AI is still kind of evolving, right? Yeah, so. and, and the way that, that's why we also have that's why Minvo has so many manual manual overrides. And if you don't like what Momo selected, you can pick your own. If you don't like where it starts or ends, you can easily change that. Um, th these are things that competitors have not baked in uh, because they take I, more uh, yeah, they take right. more time, right? So like being able to change where it starts and ends and making that easier. AI is for a very long time, I think going to be our best friend and our best assistant, but that still means that humans will be in the mix. And Minvo has both the AI that helps you save 80% of the work, but then the tooling to make the last 20% super effortless. And those things together um, will make the difference. But all that being said, um, improving the way the AI selects is something we're working on. We actually just released a feature last night that lets you share a little bit of instruction to the AI of what you think is uh, what you're interested in? Yeah, you might, maybe. So tell me, yeah, I might need to. So tell me, tell me a little bit about that, or, or how do you envision that to work, or what was the the reasoning behind that? Because yeah, I, you know, I didn't even know. I, I haven't even been in Minvoted yet today, and I'm actually going to do a short on this video. So that would be yeah. great testing that out. But tell me about this this new feature. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, this is something not many people know, but on the side, we actually also run an, a growth team. It's a social media growth team that edits video and manages social media accounts for some select mm, clients that we work I with. Like so that. a lot of the, the product improvements come from our experience trying to do that work for our clients really, really well. So something we do every time we work with a client, um, when they submit a video to us to work on, we ask them, what were some of the key things that you thought were interesting? And um, being able to basically take that same experience and tell the AI some of the key things that seemed interesting um, helps the AI kind of choose when there's two really good options, right? At the end of the day, there's whenever there's choice, there's always going to be different opinions. So, um, so yeah, that that's gonna that's already launched. You can start prompting the AI a little bit what's what you think could be good, and then over time, man, it just there's so much artificial intelligence training learning that we right. have the data now to do. So people hopping on this lifetime deal right now, they're getting the benefit of everything we're going to do in the future. And um, you know, the longer you're in this game with AI, the more opportunities and the more um, the more compound learnings and improvements happen. So I, I just expect this will be a problem that will be solved um, just over time. The accuracy will just consistently get better. Wow. So and I and I'm thinking of all this innovation coming from a very experienced staff. I think you guys have some people that's worked for Google, uh, PlayStation, Zynga, Tesla. I mean, uh, Tesla. I mean, so you you guys got a collective just mind of of geniuses in there. What are you guys doing? Because I'm gonna tell you, right? I seen some of the things you guys come. I was like, man, why hasn't nobody thought of this or why? Because we had a couple of tools come out, and I own. My, everybody calls me the tool maker, right? Because I have I own almost all the tools because I always want to review them. And I always want to try to add them to my own ecosystem and my own different businesses. And a lot of them do a little something a little different. You guys came with something different. I was like, oh, I've seen a couple of them, but haven't seen one that what Minvo is doing. And and so is that this whole genius you guys sitting in a think tank there, or what's what's going on there? All these all these bright minds here. Uh, I'm flattered, but I think uh, intelligence gets you so far. But I think really just being. Uh, close to the problem and listening to the mm -hmm. users is what gets you as far as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. Since we started this small, this growth team that's editing video and managing social media accounts for people, um, that's given us the most insight. And I think that's where you see a lot of the unique things we do. Mm -hmm. They come from our experience, literally doing this job and trying mm -hmm. to do this job better and faster. So I think that's where most of it comes from. Um, I think our technical experience has helped us build a lot of things faster. So I think that's where we're able to do things uh, faster, leaner, and uh, effectively. But I don't think anything replaces intimate experience with the problem and the customers in the space. So I think one of the questions was, I think people, well, somebody had asked, right? Do you guys have, a? Um, I forget what that's called, like an audiogram? thing i think sometimes is that is that not is that your space or is that you guys thinking about adding that or you just like nah auto autogram is like first generation or was 
it is kind of first generation, right? The audiograms. You guys think thinking about adding that, or I think somebody had asked about that. I was just wondering. Is that yeah, idea? so it's a great question. So we we started Minvo over two years ago, and uh, when we first started, we'd had a, we had a lot of audiogram support. Actually, I think we had some of the best audiograms around. Uh, we had some really cool animated audiograms, uh, things that looked very unique and different. To be honest, um, being in this game for a long time, and I think audiograms were primarily, if not still, mostly for podcasters. Mm -hmm. And I think most podcasters have realized that the audiograms are just not going to cut it. And I think, <laughs> I think, I think so because, you're close to, because you're close to the problem, you know that because I was a podcaster, but go ahead, go ahead and finish yeah. that thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I've been, I've been at podcast movement back since it was in Dallas, like two years ago. I, I know tons of podcasters. We work with podcasters and um, mm -hmm. audiograms have their place in the world. I think they still have a place maybe on LinkedIn, um, yeah. maybe on Facebook. But you know, if, if you think an audiogram in 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 an Instagram feed or a TikTok feed, when the video before it is someone making chicken souvlaki and the video after it's someone building a house, or the video after that someone jumping over a ramp with a car, if you think your audiogram is going to catch people's attention in the middle of that, um, <laughs> there you need to you think about your, yourself. If you ever stop for an audiogram, it's really hard to to, right. to really win that. So I think videos just become so easy. Podcasters have hopped onto it. Um, audiograms are something that. Are, they're easier to make than videos. So you can uh, imagine that when we have some of the bandwidth, we'll invest in providing that for people. There's a lot of other kinds of assets that are even non-video that we'd like to provide for people. Sure. Uh, think um, generating image quotes for LinkedIn, generating um, carousels. There's a lot you can generate. We just have to prioritize. And I think the most important thing for us is what helps a business or creator grow. And right now, short form video is that format. So we're investing yeah. uh, the majority of our efforts in that space. So I think I would be remiss, right, if I didn't ask you uh, what's going on with the whole TikTok thing, right? And I got a video out. It's I don't even know if I may need to drop it back in. Um, actually, I think I am as an experiment. I'm gonna drop it back in uh, Minvo because I I put it out about a year, year, year and a half ago. And I was telling people, I says, hey, I think we have a problem on our hands with TikTok. Because I said, I don't think Congress is liking some of the things that they're doing. And I told people, I says, I'm going to start doubling down on YouTube shorts as a mere fact of that. And now here we are. And I put this out maybe about a year, year and a half ago. And now it's very timely. It's aged well. And now we're at this point. So, I mean, I know you don't have a dog in this fight. You're just like, hey, we're just trying to, trying to make short viral videos videos if they're there they're there they won't but what is your take or what is your thought on that you know we're not trying to draw a line i'm just saying what do you what is your talk what is your what's your take on that mm. yeah i mean the TikTok us battle has been on for uh for a while now and, and i think a lot of people have been paying very close attention to it sure. uh, i have no idea how that's all going to shake up you know as a <laughs> as a platform as a platform that creates video we integrate with everything we can integrate with to give people sure. the options and mm -hmm. to be honest different people's content works better on different platforms so um, I agree with I that. Think we'll see how all that shakes out. Um, for our, I can tell you from our agency work that we do, TikTok still tends to be the most viral vector for content. So for really? now, it's still very strong. But I've seen, um, you know, it's interesting. I, I see, I see performance of the same clip over YouTube Shorts, Instagram, and TikTok, and I see this almost like a hundred times a week at this point, given how much content we're producing for our clients. Right. <sighs> YouTube works really well when you have subscribers. Like YouTube still values subscribers when it comes to distributing shorts. TikTok works really well, even if you have zero subscribers, uh, because it really works kind of, I, I, I don't know the truth of the algorithm, but it feels a bit more meritocratous. It, it will take your content and test it out in the world. Instagram's kind of in the middle where they are trying to be like TikTok and they're trying to be like YouTube and they value your right, right. followers and they also have an algorithm and they're trying to make it all work. So, yeah. you know, the, I think every influencer at some point starts to obsess over the algorithm. I, I I personally don't care as much. I think generally, if you're creating great content that people care about, people mm -hmm. will watch it. It's a very um, it's kind of a bit of it's like it's like a capitalistic system. People value yeah. they value and they pay with their views and their attention. How it shakes out with TikTok, I don't know, but um, I think just keep creating great content. Platforms will come and go. That's, and, that's uh, that's your, really your brand is like it's like, hey man, we're not gonna get we don't even care as long as people are putting out good content and yeah. so wow so let me ask you this did you have another thought did you have another thought on that or you wanted to close out on that that's the whole thing on TikTok, yeah. right <laughs> yeah no i think the answer is sorry kind of useless we don't know 
<laughs> so let me ask you this. So, so I noticed that you guys do the captions and they'll jump and they'll, they'll give you an emoji with a strong arm or something mm -hmm. like that. But you guys don't do the, um, I seen this and right. I seen this and I'll say first generation is, uh, when you're, you're given a clip and then you, you, you do the pulsating, right. It'll pulse the face up closer than it'll pull it back. And mm -hmm. what is I don't I don't know what that style is called, but I see a lot of successful um, people doing that. Is that something that you guys can see yourself doing or because sometimes I'll have to re-edit it on my own to try to get that effect. Mm -hmm. But do you guys see something like that, like having AI pick uh, pulsate the point like, you know, you get to a point, you says, but this is what I really want to say. Right. And then it'll bring it back or something like that. Is that something that you guys are thinking about or? Yeah, we, we actually do support this manually right now. So there is a way to do this manually. One uh -huh. of our tutorial videos on YouTube does show in the middle of it how to do that. Uh -huh. um, basically, you just got to take your video, your, your segment, cut to create a section that you want to zoom in on. And then when you yeah. click on it, you're going to adjust the the mini map on the right side right. and zoom that in a little bit more on the face. And so that's going to zoom in. So we, we had a experimental feature. We did this with AI. What we found is just it was a bit unpredictable. <laughs> to release right. as a as a trust uh, trustworthy tool so we removed sure. it but eventually yes uh being able to provide more video effects um camera camera pans camera changes yeah that work is a lot more complicated than the other work we've done so far but it is okay. something that as we clear off some of the other tasks we'll have the time to invest in some of the more advanced things like that yeah he says well we have a manual well i can do that manually right <laughs> but here's the thing with you guys, you can actually at least do it in your tool, other yes. tools. You'd have to go out and do it in the other tool and then bring it back. So that's, that's good to know. All right. So listen, I don't want to hold you any longer. So is there anything, um, on the horizon that we can look for, for you guys? Cause, um, I had at least two more questions, but let's answer that one right now at the, uh, at the onset. Is there anything you guys see that you have coming down the pipe there's a lot of competitors out there make no mistake about it you're not the only ones that have discovered hey short form is is where it's at right so yeah i mean everything we do is focused on how do you save time creating really great content so mm -hmm. you can imagine that if anything you experience as a user is slow uh it doesn't feel like you're saving time or is not creating great content we're thinking about it we're working on it um, i encourage anyone who's tried the product or is currently on their app sumo deal or using the product share your feedback over discord uh, over our canny you'll see links all over the product to share feedback with us directly um we've made tons of change i think we probably made at least 100 changes since we since we launched on AppSumo and all really? those changes, yeah, have some some of them you've noticed, some of them you won't notice, but they're all thanks to the amazing user feedback. That's one of the big reasons we joined the AppSumo community is we knew we'd get really great feedback on how to quickly improve this product. We're one of the few products that went on an app on, went on an AppSumo, and we think that user feedback will make a big difference. Some of the things to look out for is. Um, more precision in the video editor, um, mm -hmm. more AI features to automate your editing, and um, a big investment we're making as well as in the social media space. Analytics, scheduling, um, post management, there's a lot we can do in that space to help creators get even more value from what their, mm -hmm. their content's doing. So uh, I think in general, just stay tuned to our updates because there's gonna be a lot coming over the next few weeks. Nice. So let me ask you this, this one last question. I think I have one more, but let me ask you this one. Uh, it was definitely on my mind. So you guys as running your own agency for people, are there any more agency, agency features you're going to add for, for example, if I wanted to manage someone's TikTok account for them, then I think the way it's currently constructed, right? You know, don't quote me. I don't know how dated this video will be or if it will go viral, but, um, you have the ability, I have ability to add several different accounts underneath my account. Can I add those added as agencies? Or are you guys seeing a whole nother agency panel where people kind of upload it, upload their videos, and then we'll just, we'll pull them down in the Minvo and then we'll chop them up and we'll, we'll put them into short forms or what's your guys vision on that? If you do have a vision, even for agencies. Yeah, you know, I, I can't share too much there because there's a lot Ooh. we're working on um, okay. for, for okay. agencies. There is a pretty oh, amazing <laughs> experience uh, that we can provide when you can streamline everything from the input all the way to the output. 
So um, all I can say is stay tuned. If there's anyone out there who's interested in working with an agency, reach out to us. We, um, we provide the full end-to-end -end experience and you get a lot of great high quality content and performance. So I can only say you can only experience it for now, but in terms of uh, providing tooling for agency and what we're gonna do, no timeline for when it'll be public, but there's definitely some very exciting things that we're working on. Ooh, nice. So you're saying, so is that a pitch even for you guys as your own company that you guys do agency work for people? Is that what you said? I just want to make sure we're clear. Yes, okay. we we only invite people based on uh, what we see they're doing on the platform. If we think there's a good fit, we'll send out emails uh, to let them know about it. We don't, we're not super, super public about it yet. Sure. Uh, just given because it's still you know on the smaller side, we want to make sure we can do a good job for everyone that we work with. Uh, but mm -hmm. if you're on this call, maybe reach out, reach out to Jenny and, and get connected with us. Um, or if you get one of our emails inviting you to chat about the agency, let us know. But overall, like everything we do in the agency ends up becoming product improvements for the product. And I everything love we, that. That's just the cycle. And I think that's why Minvo's come to the place it's been. David, and I think all the customer feedback's going to help us get me, a lot further. David, as well. David, stop right there. For you to tell me you guys are in the trenches learning and even from your own clients as ah i think this is something we i don't know that i've i've spoken to a lot of founders right and there's what i am seeing founders do and i will admit uh, i'm not going to drop any names i'm not going to name drop right there's at least two founders that i have seen that have actively been it they weren't in, initially you guys are saying hey we already kind of came to the table already kind of working with uh, with uh as an agency for some of these clients and we kind of know what they're looking to do and, and what they're not doing. So there's, there's two other founders that are actively in it and actually doing it for clients and doing it for themselves. But you guys are the only ones that says, no, we kind of, we started, they came eventually later and started doing that. You guys are kind of on from the start doing that. I think that is so fantastic because now you know the pain points. So he's like, man, if people are having this problem, we can just add it to our tool and being so close to it, other companies are not doing it. Let's take a giant company like Adobe. They're not in the trenches, right? They they have the technology and they've been doing this for so long, but they're not in the trenches and they're they're like a dinosaur. They can't move on a dime and implement things. So tell me about your your thoughts of just wanting to be there in the trenches every day doing this, this grinding of putting out short form video and how you're learning firsthand. How is that helping you guys as we kind of wrap up here? Oh yeah, I mean, it, it's the single greatest decision we've ever made at the company is to be doing the work for clients with our tool. You know, that's the other thing we do. We're not doing the work for clients and using Adobe to do this. We're using our tool right. and if our tool can't do it, then we have to go build the capability so that we can yeah. start doing that. And I think this also puts a lot of pressure on us because as an agency, we're judged based on how much performance and reach we're able to provide on the videos we're creating. So we're really thinking about the final product all the time. I think a lot of mm -hmm. startups and a lot of companies are thinking about their tool as the final product and they just get an output at the end. But we're really thinking about the final outputs all the time. So wow. any feature we release is like really focused on that. Um, single great decision we've ever made. It gives us a lot of intimacy with how to improve the product. Those improvements continuously come and keep coming out to the users. And to be quite honest, Jenny, what we found is there's a lot of people that need a tool to you know, save time and do this work faster. But there's also a lot of people who actually just need the time back and they need to start seeing results. And that's where the, we felt like um, mm. us being able to use our tool to provide that at a price that's way cheaper than the average agency can provide mm -hmm. and being able to show real results for people, um, we're able to serve more segments of the market by being able to help the people who are actually ready to pay a bit, but start seeing results and save a lot of time. Wow, learned a lot in this video. I have one loaded question. It's like, what loaded, what? So <laughs> give me, my audience and my viewers, one viral tip that a lot of people probably don't know or it's something that they could test out. Not nothing that you can say guarantee works because everything kind of changes, right? But give us something you're saying. I'm seeing people do this for a little extra viral juice, if you will. So can you can you share something with us for the people? Hey, 
digital growth hacks. We're going to bring you the we're going to bring you the insights. So, David, what do you got for us at Minvo? And don't forget, you can pick up Minvo right now using my link in the description below. I, if I bring you the juice, at least use my link so I can continue to bring you the juice. I'll probably make enough to probably get maybe a large or a grande coffee. <laughs> I don't, maybe right. I'm still stretching it at that particular point. But give us something. Give us one insight uh, on a viral a viral little trickery. What do we got there? What do we got, David? I'm going to be quiet so I can hear this. <laughs> Listen, I spend a lot of my day trying to help clients go viral on social media. And I'll, I'll give you I'll be my tip, but I'll also tell you the tip that everyone gives you that I think is obvious. So the obvious tip that uh -huh. you should focus on is um, make sure your first five seconds are very exciting and captivating. But I think if you're a creator in the short form space and you don't know about making the first five seconds exciting, and captivating, you probably haven't read enough uh, enough tips, or if this is the first time you're hearing that tip, uh, make the first five seconds exciting and captivating. And you can do that in a lot of ways. It's what you say. Um, is there some B-roll at the beginning? Is there some music? Make the first five seconds captivating. But I'll tell you the tip that I actually think is much more important that would help many, many creators out there. My number one tip for creators and businesses creating content is don't be boring. <laughs> what isn't that obvious you think it's obvious <laughs> but let me tell you um it's not Man. the creator's fault but a lot of times when you're creating long form content you're talking you're rambling you're going into different details mm -hmm. and then creators mm -hmm. will take a chunk of that and put that rambling and just toss it into a short version of rambling which is not exciting so if you're using whatever you're using to edit whether you're using minvo adobe descript whatever you're using capca doesn't matter use that editor to cut out a creative mm -hmm. engaging story make sure that if there's any point of that video that is not interesting that is not captivating cut it out don't bore people with with the details because wow. short form content is meant to captivate attention short form content's not long form content long form content is the dialogue it's the depth it's like the full book okay. but you know your short form is like a quote from the book it's like a summary and just don't be boring be captivating take your message uh slim it down to the to the meat get rid of all the other stuff and just uh get people excited get people excited about your content get them to your channel get them to your brand and i think that's my number one tip for uh growing wow on social media. david i love that right say hey digital growth hacks that's what we do here right we bring you the juice i really appreciate that i am in love with your tool i, I think and i'm only telling you that right as we kind of wrap up here i was i'm not gonna say i was the first first one but i was one of the first waves that took your tool out for a test drive and i was very impressed and as usual right i got beat up a little bit i was like oh it doesn't have this it doesn't have this. I was like yeah but it has this it has this and it has that and they're like oh i didn't think about that right so i just i just wanted to tell you and i see that that it's doing a lot of the different things too i'm excited about the future of minvo um i hope um uh, my viewers and my listeners out there are going to be excited about it as well any parting words for my my guest and my i mean any parting words for my viewers or my subscribers give my subscribers some love right give them some love david but any other any parting words because they they kept them they're keeping me going and my members on my channel love them no man thank you you know thank you so much i've seen we've seen all the support we appreciate all the support from everyone clean yourself journey um parting words listen our absolute deal is running for the next uh, two i think a few weeks i'm not sure how long it's going to run for but hop on it while you can uh, it's kind of a crazy deal you don't see many video editors do it and there's a reason for it but hop on it while you can uh, we are available over discord intercom email arcani uh, any way you can reach out to us we are very responsive please reach out we'd love to hear from you and uh, whether it's for some tips on your social media or just how to use the tool we're always happy to chat love it hey this has been jenny jones digital growth hacks club i've had david here to come hang out with us from minvo this tool is this tool's got a lot of juice it's doing some different things i'm excited for them i'm excited for the future one of the things i love about what they're doing is they are in the trenches a lot of founders are like let me just sit over here in my office and just watch you guys no they are in the trenches with their sleeves rolled up and i can appreciate that hey this has been jenny jones digital growth hacks club thank you guys for joining in today until next time Thank you for joining us here. 
on the Digital Growth Hack Club, where we help you elevate your business and your bottom line. Please do not forget to subscribe and share. And until next time, goodbye for now. Ha <laughs> ha!